In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today is December the 3rd. It is the first Saturday of December. So on these first Saturdays, we really want to fulfill them as best we can. We want to make reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. As she requested the five first Saturdays. And in that spirit of reparation, we just continue them simply. And Our Lady asks that we pray the rosary on that day, which we should do every day anyway. Go to confession on that day, eight days before or eight days after. Um, Holy <coughs> Communion on that day. And for those who don't have Mass, spiritual communion. Fourth, meditation for 15 minutes on the mysteries of our Lord's life in the mysteries of the Holy Rosary. 15 minutes, that's easy. And then lastly, with a direct intention to make reparation to the Immaculate Heart. So let's really strive to do this, and this is something Our Lady of Fatima begged us to do. Don't take these requests from heaven lightly. Uh, Sister Lucia said, the punishments have come on the earth, World War I, World War II, and Vatican II, and the ongoing punishments that are because men don't listen to Our Lady. Men don't listen to her. They give a deaf ear. And the good don't, don't really, the good don't do it with the right intention and the bad can care less so let's let's rise above that and draw close to our lady and really make reparation to her for all the sins go to her heart and try to pull out all these thorns that are deeply embedded and bleeding in her sweet heart of the immaculate heart of mary it's also the feast of saint francis xavier the great uh, jesuit priest and missionary <coughs> And I spoke about him this morning. So today I want to focus on a great saint of two days ago. His feast is December the 1st. Because he was martyred on a wet, muddy day on December 1st in 1581. He was a hunted priest. His name was St. Edmund Campion. He's one of the, the, the champion martyrs of England. So I'll read you the account of his life and it's very, and I skip over a lot of it so it won't be too long. So St. Edmund Campion, he was born of, of uh, parents that were Catholic but they became Protestant at the time of Queen Elizabeth. So they apostatized from the faith. But little Edmund, and his father's name was Edmund, and Edmund Jr., he's the saint. He was born about 1540, and when he was 10 years old, he was admitted to the Blue Coat School by interest of the grocer's company. So it's very interesting, in England, they, they all wore uniforms at school, and even today in England, unlike the United States, all the public schools still have uniforms, suit and tie, over uh, sports coat tie for the boys and a matching dress for the girls. They're not always modest, but uh, they're uniforms. And that's something praiseworthy and quite wise. But over here, anything goes and you can dress like a slob. He was an extraordinarily promising boy. And when he was 15 years old, he, gave a scholarship, he was given a scholarship to St. John's College in Oxford, then newly founded by Sir Thomas White. At 18 years old, St. Edmund Campion was appointed a junior fellow, and he made a great reputation as an orator. He was chosen to speak at two funerals, and he even was chosen to speak before the Queen when she visited Oxford, which was a big deal, in 1566. So she arrived on her chariot with all the guards, trumpets, horses, and all the regalia, and she sat and listened to the Protestant Edmund Campion given a speech in Latin. His talents and personality earned him the goodwill and patronage of the Queen, of Cecil, and of Leicester. To the last named Leicester, he dedicated his history of Ireland, and Cecil later referred to him as one of the diamonds of England, St. Edmund Campion. So he was a promising Protestant boy, and he was so promising that they wanted to ordain him ordain him a deacon in the Anglican schismatic church. He had taken the oath of royal supremacy, 
which is to admit that the queen is the head of the church in England, which is, an, which is a heresy. And although his allegiance to Protestantism was much shaken by his reading of the fathers of the church, he was persuaded by Dr. Chenet, doctor in theology, bishop of Gloucester, to receive the diaconate of the Anglican church. At Oxford, at Oxford he was very popular and was the center of a group of personal disciples. But the, the taking of orders in a church about which he was doubtful began to trouble him. And at the end of his term as junior proctor of the university in 1569, the grocer's company, whose exhibitioner he was, being restive about his papist, papistical tendencies, that is, papism, Catholicism, he went to Ireland, where an attempt was being made to revive its university. While there, he wrote a short history of the country. <coughs> so he's in Ireland, and he's surrounded by many more Catholics. Ireland was very Catholic. And in this time, he's, he's studying deeper the Catholic faith, and he's realizing, I'm in the wrong religion. And he's a good example to those who are raised in a false religion, <coughs> raised Muslim or raised Protestant or raised atheist or whatever. Um, if, you're, if you're born with a disease and you can cure it, you should seek the cure. If you're born in a false religion and you know there's the true one to find, you better find that one to save your soul. And this is what St. Edmund Campion did. He was not going to risk losing his soul at the cost of being praised as the great orator of, of the Anglican schism. St. Edmund Campion had left Oxford full of remorse of conscience and detestation of mind for himself being an Anglican minister, and he took no pains to conceal his sentiments. Accordingly, after the publication of Pope St. Pius V's bull, which excommunicated Queen Elizabeth, which was a great document, and he was, there, he was in danger as a suspected person. Those who knew Edmund, they knew he was coming up with Catholic ideas, so they suspected him. In 1571, he returned from Ireland back to England in disguise. He was present at the trial of Blessed John Story in Westminster Hall, and then he left for Douay. Douay was the seminary that started under the great Bishop William Allen, who saw the need to form priests and send them back to England, as any good bishop will do in this crisis. The first thing any bishop should do today is con his first concern should be seminaries, the formation of priests. That's just the first concern. And, and the Archbishop Lefebvre was a shining example of that. He saw what the church really needs now in this crisis is priests to continue the true faith, the true mass, the true sacraments. And this is what this great Bishop William Allen, Allen did. He founded a seminary in Douay for the English boys who would come across the channel, study, be ordained, and be sent back hunted priests. St. Edmund Campion was stopped on the way for having no passport, but was allowed to escape on giving up his luggage and money. One of his first actions at Douay Seminary was to send a long and striking letter, a vehement epistle, to Dr. Chenet, who had strong Catholic leanings. St. Edmund Campion took his bachelor's degree and was ordained subdeacon at Douay, and then in 1573 went to Rome and was admitted to the Society of Jesus. As there was yet no English province, he was sent to that of Bohemia, and after his novitiate at Brno, went to the College of Prague to teach. So now as a priest, he's ordained a priest, he's saying Mass, and he's teaching in, today would be Slovakia, Czechoslovakia, Prague, where the infant of Prague appeared. In view of the great success of the Society of Jesus among the Protestants of Germany, Bohemia, and Poland, Bishop 
Then, Father William Allen persuaded Pope Gregory XIII to send some Jesuits to England. And at the end of 1579, Father Edmund Campion and Father Robert Persons were chosen as the first to be sent. <coughs> so these were the first Jesuits sent on the boat <coughs> in disguise. So uh, Father Robert Persons, he dressed up as a, as a soldier returning from the lowlands. So he, and he played the part very well. He even had the swagger walk of a proud soldier, as was described by one of the partners with him. And uh, Father Campion and another priest, coadjutor brother rather, was Ralph Emerson. They were all martyred. And they came as jewel merchants, dressed up as jewel merchants. So here the priests are dressed in disguise to come into England. <clears throat> On the night before St. Edmund Campion left for England, out of Prague, one of the fathers, by an irresistible impulse, wrote over the door of his cell the words, Pater Edmundus Campianus Martyr. Father Edmund Campion, Martyr. So it was a very <laughs> prophetic words, because he will be a martyr. He left Rome in the spring of 1580, one of the party whose adventures are so well described in Blessed Ralph Sherwin's letter to Ralph Bickley. When they got to the Protestant stronghold of Geneva, Campion, Father Campion pretended to be an Irish serving man called Patrick, and they all seemed to have behaved with the reckless cheerfulness that makes more serious-minded people think the English mad. <laughs> At the gate on leaving, after having had a discussion with Beza, Father Campion disputed with the minister and then left the poor shackerel to be ragged by the rest. <clears throat> The Jesuits were not welcomed by all the Catholics, many of whom feared that new troubles, the arrival of the representatives of the redoubt of the questionable Society of Jesus might bring on their heads. So remember, the Society of Jesus was founded by St. Ignatius this, just a few years before, 10, 15 years before. So these are the, among the first Jesuit priests so they make their way to England across the channel and they arrive and when they arrive they start saying mass in people's homes just like this they go from house to house dressed in disguise saying mass and my last visit to England I saw in York there's a bed a bed support with uh, which it looks like a bed head but when the priest comes, they move the bed back, they put the bed against the wall, and they lower a shelf on that bed piece, and it's, it's an altar. So it's an altar disguised as a bed piece. And it's on there that many of the priests said Mass. The coming of the Jesuits was known to the government, and they soon had to leave St. Edmund Campion and Father Robert Persons had to leave London. St. Edmund Campion going to work in Berkshire, Oxfordshire, and Northamptonshire, where he made some notable converts. He wrote to the Father General in Rome, I ride about some piece of the country every day. So this is Old English. So I travel through a part of England every day. The harvest is wonderful, great. I cannot long escape the hands of the heretics. I am, in a, I am in apparel to myself very ridiculous. I'm dressed in clothes that seem to me very ridiculous. I often change it in my name also. I read letters sometimes myself that in the first front tell news that Campion is taken, which roused in every place where I come so, f so filleth my ears with the sound thereof that fear itself has taken away all fear. So the word is out in the newspapers. They're looking for Father Edmund Campion. And here he is going from house to house, hunted down now. After meeting Father Persons in London, where persecution was very hot, Father Edmund Campion went to Lancashire, where he preached almost daily, 
and with conspicuous success <clears throat> with bringing in converts. Pursued always by spies, he was chased by spies and several times nearly arrested. All this time he was writing a Latin treatise, which was called Decem Rationes, Ten Reasons, because in it he expounded ten reasons why he had challenged the most learned Protestants openly to discuss religion with him. The greatest difficulty was found in getting this work printed, but eventually it was achieved on a secret press, a printing press at the house of Madame Cecilia Stonor in Stonor Park. Berkshire, and in commemoration, June 27, 1581, 400 copies of it were found distributed on the benches of the University Church at Oxford. So some daring, probably young guys, went into Oxford, which was now Protestant, and they passed out the, the Ten Reasons <clears throat> to be Catholic, uh, <coughs> written by Father Edmund Campion. So they, so they were putting Catholic literature in the enemy's camp. And if they were caught, they certainly would have been arrested. This work of the Ten Reasons made a tremendous sensation, and efforts of, to capture the writer were redoubled. Three weeks later, he was taken. After the publication of the Decem Rationes, the Ten Reasons, it was judged prudent that Blessed Edmund Campion should retire, <coughs> get out of the way, and hide for a bit to Norfolk. And on the way, he stayed at the house of Mrs. Yate, a Lyford at Lyford near Wantgate, Wantage. So all these towns, these are towns of England. That... On Sunday, July 16th, some 40 people assembled there to assist at mass and hear him preach. But among them was a traitor. Within the next 12 hours, the house was searched three times. And at the last search, Blessed Edmund was found with two other priests concealed above the stairway. So in the description, um, they broke open doors, they broke open walls, they tore off a lot of the wallpaper, and they didn't find the priests for two days. And they thought they were just going to leave finally. But then the traitor told them, who was actually an ex-Catholic seminarian, his name was, I think, Anthony Young. He told them, no, he's, they, he, they were not seen escaping this house. They're in there somewhere. So this guy was a real Judas. So the police went back into the house, and they started taking a crowbar and, and ripping open the paneling up on the staircase. And when they opened one of the paneling and tore it open, there the three priests were found and arrested. <coughs> then they were taken to the tower, the London Tower, <coughs> from Colnbrook onward being pinioned, and St. Edmund labeled Campion the seditious Jesuit. After three days in the little ease, he was interviewed by the Earls of Bedford and Leicester, and it is said the Queen herself tried to bribe him into apostasy, because she had a respect for him. And she tried to give him money to abandon the Catholic faith. So when it says the little ease, I think that's one of the tortures in the London Tower. Which is uh, being put in a box and you can't rest. You can't stand up. You can't lie down. And you can't. It's just always uncomfortable. That's what they call the little ease. Other attempts to make him abandon the Catholic faith were made. Having failed, he was racked. So this is the torture where they tie the hands and feet and crank it. So the, the body is stretched out. So the muscles start getting tight. The ligaments start snapping. The muscles start ripping and tearing. And sometimes even the bones can break and detach, be, be dislocated from their sockets. So he was racked. And arrests were then made of some who had sheltered him, Catholics who took him in to have mass. Many of them were, some of them were also arrested and put in prison. So we got to be ready for those days too. We had a taste of it, you know, in the last three years when we 
I just kept on saying mass everywhere, but there were places where neighbors were calling, oh, there's a gathering, they could call the police. It happened in some places. Up in Toronto for the Society of St. Pius X, the, the new SSPX, they were still having mass to their credit. Uh, but one of the neighbors called the police and reported it because there were so many cars at the church. So they, uh, they were told to shut down. I don't know what they did after that, but they were. <coughs> I hope they didn't shut down. But here it is. While still broken by torture, St. Edmund Cambon was four times confronted by Protestant dignitaries with questions, objections, and insults. And he answered them with spirit and effectiveness. He was then racked again, a terrible torture where they're stretched and stretched. He was racked so fiercely that when he was asked the following day how he felt, he could reply, not ill, because not at all. In other words, not, I, I don't, how do you feel? Not bad, because I can't feel anything anyway. That was what he said. He couldn't feel anything because his whole body was numb with pain. <clears throat> no handle could be found, no argument or reason could be found against him. So on November 14th, he was indict, indicted in Westminster Hall with, with St. Ralph Sherwin, Thomas Cotton, Luke Kirby, and others who were all martyrs and, and priests. On the fabricated charge of having plotted at Rome and Rem to raise a rebellion in England and coming into the realm for that purpose. So they were falsely accused of trying to stir uh, a death of the queen. When told to plead to the charge, he was too weak to move his arms. And one of his companions, kissing his hand, held it up for him. St. Edmund Campion conducted the defense both of himself and others with much ability, protesting their loyalty to the queen demolishing the evidence, discrediting the witnesses, and showing that their only offense was their Catholic faith. The packed jury brought them in as guilty, but it took them an hour to make up their minds to do it. Before the sentence of death was passed, Blessed Edmund Campion talked and addressed the court in these words. Listen carefully, this is very powerful. He said to the, all these, most of them Catholic apostates, he said, in condemning us priests, you condemn all your own ancestors. To be condemned with, the, with these old lights, not of England only, but of the world, by the degenerate descendants is both gladness and glory to us. God lives, posterity will live. Their judgment is not so liable to corruption as that of those who now sentence us to death. So in other words, you're, by condemning us priests to death, you're condemning all the Catholic priests that converted England, that brought the faith to England, that, that made England so great, you're putting your fathers to death. St. Edmund Campion's sister came to him with a message from Hopton, offering him a good benefice as the price of apostasy. So lots of money if you'll abandon the Catholic faith. And also he had visit, a visit from Eliot, who had both betrayed and given evidence against him, and now went in fear of his life. Blessed Edmund Campion freely forgave him and gave him a letter of recommendation to a nobleman in Germany where he would be safe. On December 1st, a wet, muddy day, St. Edmund Campion... Sherwin and Brian, the priests, were drawn to Tyburn together behind the horse on the hurdle as they went bumping along on the cobble streets. And there they were executed with the usual barbarities, hang, drawn, and quartered. <clears throat> on the scaffold, Blessed Edmund again refused to give an opinion of the Pope's bull against Elizabeth and publicly prayed for her. Your queen and my queen, unto whom I wish a long reign with all prosperity, he said. Some of the blood of this man, St. Edmund Campion, splashed on to the young gentleman. A Protestant young man was there watching the execution. His name was Henry Walpole. 
<coughs> and some of the blood splashed on him from when they were cutting off the arms and legs of St. Edmund Campion. Some of the blood splashed on him and merited for him his conversion. So Henry Walpole would become Catholic. He would go across the channel, become a priest, be imprisoned, and his name is still chiseled into the wall. You can still see Father Henry Walpole. His name is in the wall in the prison tower in London. <coughs> and he was also <coughs> martyred. So the blood of martyrs is the seed of Christians. The blood of St. Edmund Campion brought many more martyrs with him who went straight to heaven. So what a glory in heaven it must be with St. Edmund Campion right now and all the English priests who were martyred and laymen and brave women too who were who suffered much, who took care of the priests as much as they could and housed them like St. Margaret Clitheroe. And she said before her trial, she said, if I could house a thousand more priests, I would gladly do it. If I could die a thousand deaths for, for our Lord, I would gladly do it. So let's pray to St. Edmund Campion and all these great martyrs of England because we're facing something very similar. They have a new mass imposed on them. They wouldn't go to that new mass, so they were put to death. And they could be set free if they just went once to the Anglican mass, Anglican service. So that's our times. We're asked to go to that new mass, to accept Vatican II with all its new heresies. And we just have to simply refuse. And that's why we're having mass in basements, in houses, in hotels, in barns, in garages. That's why we're in this state of of emergency but we're not yet being hunted and shot and hanged and arrested yet we're certainly not there yet so we must publicly press profess the faith publicly promote the kingship of christ and publicly oppose these socialists and communists trying to destroy our country in the white house so let's turn to the mother of god she has all the answers she has all the solutions if you have any troubles in your soul Troubles at home, troubles with your job, troubles with people. Turn to Our Lady and pray her rosary. She, she promises everything can be solved through the power of the prayer of the rosary. O Mary conceived without sin. O Mary conceived without sin. O Mary conceived without sin. And for those who do not have recourse to thee, especially all communists and Freemasons, and other enemies of Holy Mother Church. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.